Hallelujah. How many of you love him more than anything? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, team. Amen. Amen. You ready for the word? You ready for the word? Amen. Amen. Everybody with your Bible or, or whatever device your Bible is on. Holding it up and declaring, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you today. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your overshadowing love. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for this word that we're about to receive, God. We thank you that it will fall into good ground and it will grow up there and there will be transformation and change. And God, we love you today with our whole heart. We rebuke everything that's on assignment to stop this word from going forth and declare that it will go forth unhindered and unabashed in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Today's Engage Lesson 3. Engaged Lesson 3. Engaged Lesson 3. Put phones on silence, please. Engaged, lesson three. And the subtitle is, God is engaged. God is engaged. God is engaged. In previous lessons, we talked about transformation is crucial to being engaged using the butterfly as the illustration. Then we talked about the first lesson being us being engaged in the things of God. And so today we're going to talk about how God is engaged with us. And then if we would ask ourselves a question, it would be something like this. How engaged are we in our walk with God? How engaged are we with our walk, in our walk, with God? We, we get engaged to a lot of stuff, but how engaged are we to, to our walk with God? Turning to our, our first scripture, and this is foundational for the lesson today. 2 Chronicles 16 and 9a, when I say 9a, the first part of the phrase. Second Chronicles 16 and 9. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read the first part of it. And it's from the New Living Translation. Like I told the, the Bible class on Wednesday is that we're going to go to different versions. Uh, only two today probably. But generally we switch around NIV, NLT, just a number of them. 
2 Chronicles 16 and 9. New Living Translation. And it says there, the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Let me read that again because it said a whole lot there. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth. How much of the earth? The whole earth. In order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Amen. The last words of the scripture is fully committed to him. So God is looking for people that are fully committed to him. So, but, but, but before. He finds fully committed people, but he's engaged in looking for people. Come on. Did you get that? He's engaged in looking for people who are what? What does fully mean? All in. Everybody say all in. Now we can get. Crazy, we, we, we act like we're fully committed, but we only committed as we allot the time for the commitment. When it fits the schedule, I'm committed. The problem with the millennial age and the ages and the different designation after that is that they don't want to commit to some of the things that previous generations did. They don't even want to commit to regular church attendance. They think I can do it Whenever I, I, I run through or drive through, uh, uh, if they have it at the mall, and I heard somebody had opened up a, 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 a worship center at a mall with TVs and different things. So in between shopping, they can stop and have their praise and worship and then go on and do whatever they need to do because we don't want to be committed anywhere. We want everything to fit our lifestyle. Between Macy's and J.C. Penney or, you know, Or Target and Kmart. You know, you, you want it convenient, but you, want, you don't want to be committed. Amen. We're that way even in our giving. We don't want to commit to, to, to giving. Amen. But I'm not going to, I want you to stay up with me because I made so. Because things take commitment. Yes. When folk hire you on their job, the one thing that they're looking for at the interviewing process is, is a level of commitment. Yes, sir. And how do they check your commitment is sometimes they check your history. Yes. And they do go to social uh, 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 media and outlets to find out what you are committed to. Because it shows them. Even when you are on the internet, you are committed to finding certain things. And that's why the algorithm computes what you like to go through. And so when you're not thinking about what you normally go to, it's dropping it down in front of your face. On, Say for an instance, you're on eBay all the time. You're shopping for shoes. Where well, everything that shows up in your feed is going to be shoes. Yes. Yes. How do they know that? Because you're always looking at shoes. Yes. So since they're always looking, I'm going to show them most shoes. Mm -hmm. if, if, anybody know what I'm talking about? All of you, that, how many, if you're not guilty, keep your hand down. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Amen. Amen. If it's not eBay, it's, 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 okay, help me. I knew you knew. I knew you knew. That was a trick question when I said, amen. amen. But it says that the eyes of the Lord, God is looking for who he can find that is in, in order to, to strengthen those who are fully committed. 
That means once you are fully committed, you will get the strength of God in that commitment. Yeah. But commit. Yeah. We don't want folk don't want to commit to marriage. You are not engaged for four years and ten years. Amen. That's not an engagement. Help me, help me somebody, because we miss it. We miss it. You know, I'm engaged. When did you get engaged? Oh, nine years ago. No, you. Help us, Lord. <laughs> you need a new ring. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. We just miss it. You know, you get engaged, and nine months later, a year later, you, you, you plan to wait, and you get married. You, you, you ain't engaged forever. <laughs> we being, when we say we're engaged, it might mean they locked in to me. Keep on stepping. Amen. Oh, oh, y'all didn't like that. Uh, that wasn't funny. The Bible shares God's part in engagement with us. God will strengthen us to fully engage with God means he will be the primary power in our lives. He will be the power in our lives. He will be the primary source of power in our life that causes everything to function out of this engagement. He's the power. And, and let me give you three uh, a short, non-exhaustive list of, of the results of God's power. The results of God's power uh, in an engaged relationship. When you are fully engaged with God, it means when you go through problems in life, God will be at your side and will empower you through those problems. See, your life will not be problemless, but it doesn't have to be powerless. There's a difference. You have power in every circumstance to make it through. Sometimes you wonder how you make it through. Well, you're not operating on your own power. Somebody else say, Thank you, Jesus, because I'm tired. I don't feel like a the, 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 hanging with it no more. I'm tired. I'm tired of wrestling with them. I'm tired of fighting folk. I'm tired of fussing with them about doing this, doing that. The other. Just admit, sometimes we just get to, and thank God that he, 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 he's engaged with us because he joins us in that weak place and becomes our power. And sometimes it works better when you get your tired self back out the way. You know, have you have you ever figured out how stuff happens? Seems like they work out even, even once you take your hand off. Amen. They are gonna eat. Amen. They gonna survive. Amen. And and, and newsflash, you are not their savior. All right. Amen. Come on, go. Just in case you got a savior complex. Check your hands and check your feet. <laughs> Any holes anywhere? Check your side. Are you bleeding from somewhere? Your bank book might, but are you bleeding from? <laughs> check, 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 check. You got, a, you got a thorny crown lately? You know, check. See? No, that's mascara. I'm talking my blood. Check. <laughs> Are y'all out there? Amen. And you got to undo Savior complex. That's my. <laughs> They'll be all right. You just get to strength enough, have some power enough to say, 
Y'all going to take care of yourselves. So you, you'll be all right. Amen. <laughs> You'll see something you didn't see before. They'll start picking up stuff that they didn't pick up before you. <laughs> Once you get down off your cross. <laughs> oh, boy, this is good for it today. Tell her to wake up. My next thing is stand up. Next one. When we face disappointments, God's strength and power will come into our lives and lift us up just when we need it the most. Isn't that the truth? Yes. Let me handle it. I'm, I'm good. He'll lift us up just when we need it the most. Stop worrying about every time you fall that, that you won't have what you need. Because that isn't the first time that it's been on the floor. <laughs> Are y'all with me? That's not the first time it's been on the floor. That's not the first time you've been... You, you, You've been level with the vertical with the with with the, with the ceiling, and you got up before. Trust in His power for what He did yesterday; that He can do it today. He didn't change. The eyes of the Lord searched up in order to whose hearts are. You can't rest in the word if you don't understand that the word says you got help when you need it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, my God. Third one. When we are uncertain about our future, worried or afraid, God's power will give us peace. Say amen. amen. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Because he has trusted in him, in me. Come on. How many of you know that worry just makes you worry? And worry makes you sick. Worry turns you into an insomniac. You can't even rest. Amen. All right, all right. That's the power of full engagement. The key truth is this. God is fully engaged with us. So I want you to say this statement with me. God is fully, God is fully engaged, engaged with, me. with me. Say it again. God is fully engaged with me. Say it again. God is fully engaged with me. This engagement is not a percentage it is really the whole percent, a hundred percent of the time. There is not a time when he's not engaged. Don't look at the list now. We'll get to that later. Listen to what I'm saying. There is not a time where he's not engaged. And God has not speak, stopped speaking. He speaks in every circumstance. Even at 9-11, when those buildings were getting ready to topple, there were some people that heard something that told them, don't go to work today, and others didn't hear it. I believe God spoke something in some way, in a subtle way, to everybody to dissuade it so that building could possibly be empty because God is engaged with us and he sees danger afar off. Oh, God. But are you attuned enough to hit his engagement with you that you don't override it with your I want? And I got to have. And I did it my way. Leave Frankie alone and listen to God.
As a matter of fact, let's show, let me show you how engaged God is. God has, and, 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 and I remember this message from Pastor uh, 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 Marcy about having skin in the game. God has skin in the game. Yes, yes. What is God sent in the, what is God skin in the game? It's his son, Jesus. That's his skin in the game. Just so you won't think he came and he didn't bring nothing. God's got skin in the game, and it's expensive skin. What he has in the game is valuable and priceless. There is no one, nothing like it, none of its kind anywhere. The Bible declares it. It said, God so loved the world that he gave his only. That's his skin in the game, only. You're giving up something that you got four of. That's my best dress. You got 20. <laughs> but Jesus was God's only. How priceless is your only? Until Brittany came along, Lou was my only. For six years. And he was upset when he wasn't the only. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Something about only make a difference. Ooh. Jesus got skin in the game. God's got skin in the game. And while God gave Jesus to die for us and pay the penalty for our sin, he actually, he gave them to us, but, but he only really loaned them to us. He sent them for a purpose, and when that purpose was served, he said, come home. So he's back at home, sitting next to his dad, daily interceding for us. But what God also did is because of what Jesus did, he said, he said I have to figure out a way to leave his body in a way in the earth. Because his actual body is with him. Yeah. It wasn't in the grave. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else's is in the grave. All them other saviors and God, you know, you know, Buddha, all them. Amen. Him and his stomach is in the grave. <laughs> but his body is with him. So he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise up the body of Christ and call it the church. Yeah. The ecclesia, Greek for the called out ones. Yeah, yeah. Called out. Called out to do what? Be engaged with God in the, in the ministry. And so when he did that, he, he also, not only did he make us his body in the earth, because he has his body with him. He filled this body, but then he gave the body the use of his name. And through his name, we have kingdom authority, not only in heaven, but on earth. Come on. Are y'all out there? He gave us the use of his name, and he gave us a body to work in because you are illegal on the earth without a body. That's an alien. That's why bodies need to witness to bodies. So God's got skin in the game. God's got skin in the game. By giving us the use of the name, he made kingdom authority available to us. To utilize in the world to bring about his purpose. And it's unlike our tendencies, God's engagement with us isn't up one day and down the next. Sometimes we feel like that, just, just up and down, down and up. You, uh, center your bipolar self down. <laughs> we can't even come up with, with, a, with, with, a, with a, 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 a psychological or or, or a psychiatric diagnosis because people just start claiming it. 
I think the worst thing that happened to us is WebMD. <laughs> well, you start diagnosing everything. You get sick and you start going on and say, oh, I got that. I got that. Since that coronavirus thing came in, you've been scared to eat Chinese food. You, y'all just... And most of that stuff coming from Prime is coming. <laughs> Are you out there? Well, I want you to understand this today. When we are feeling either up or down in our relationship to God, it isn't God who moved. Somebody moved, but it wasn't God. He's where he was yesterday, is where he is today, is where he'll be tomorrow. The Bible said he changes not. Oh, God. If he changes not, he doesn't move. He doesn't have to. Why would you move when you're at every place at all? <laughs> Where does God stand? Wherever he wants to. <laughs> God's engagement in my life and in yours never wavers. So you can always trust in him. God remains fully engaged in our lives again at how many times? All time. There's a scripture that speaks to this. Let's run to that right quick because I like to confirm it with the word of God. Everything that we're saying as far as explaining and then moving to the next place. Psalm 139, 1 through 6. And then we'll read some more out of 139. 139, 1 through 6, New King James Version. 139, 1 through 6, New King James Version. And it says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. Do he know you more sitting than rising? <laughs> I, you understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. He understands even your quirks. Oh. And are acquainted with all my ways. How many of y'all got some ways that only God knows? <laughs> I don't understand them. That is that's a strange way. I never forget. I had this this way when 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 I ate them them things a lot. My uh, godmother, she would make uh, at Christmas time. She would always have dinner. Those were the days when when we were engaging big family dinner and stuff. Oh, those were the times, my friend. <laughs> I just went from house to house and collected, didn't we, Pastor? We were wrong. I went to my pastor's house. People would bring so many cakes, they would be in the back room, they would, he would just walk out and pass us cakes, and we said, thank you, dunk us shit, and walk straight out the door. We just, we'd just be just as happy about it, and we'd go from place to place. And, and Odie Anderson is, it was my godmother, our, our godmother, and she, uh, she would cook chitlins, and, and you know, the standard was, is that you would, uh, you would eat them with, with cornbread. And, 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 and I, I wasn't, a, I'm not, even today, to a big cornbread fan. I'll do, it's all right. It's, but I like rolls, and so I would eat them with rolls. And she said, rolls and cornbread, something wrong with you. <laughs> then, and chitlins, and chitlins, rolls and chitlins, something wrong with you. And then one day, she just stood in front of me. She said, she, she played the, the race card on me. She said, you are Oreo, aren't you? <laughs> I 
I said, I said, Odie, that hurt my feeling. Give me another roll. You know? <laughs> ways. How many got strange ways like that? There, there are certain things you like to do. Some of you got, you don't like your food touching ways. See, I knew I was going to come home in a minute. Won't stuff running together. It's got to be separated. Now, it's on a plate that does this, and you want to separate your food. <laughs> Anybody like that? If you like that, just wave your head. You, you want your stuff. You don't want it all running together. You've got to separate. You don't, you don't want how, how many people stir their eggs into their grits? See that country? Yeah, how many? <laughs> how many? See, 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 I know. But what I'm trying to say is, the Lord says, I know you so well, I know your grit and egg stirring self. I know all of your ways. Either you like sugar on them or you don't. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm going to mess it up in a minute here, so I'm going to stop. Y'all be surprised. I, I sit in restaurants, and when the grits come, out come the sugar. Y'all yes. don't understand. Y'all just come on, come on. I'm just trying to make it real because we need to, to teach and preach in the places where we live on earth. Amen. I can be philosophical. I could join the ivory tower somewhere. It can be a theologi theological treatise that you won't understand and you won't care to understand, and you won't remember nothing I said. But you'll remember when you leave out here today that the pastor talked about chitlins, he talked about grits, he talked about egg, he talked about touching food, and he talked about it as it relates to God knowing, knowing all my ways. So if he, think he, if, you, if he knows your dietary habits, guess what else he knows? There's nothing hidden from him. He knows it. You keep hearing the hide from men. We have some friends. I'm, I'm personal. I don't let all my information out, and the government got every all of it, and they watching you say that as you speak. <laughs> they can tell you where you've been based on your spending habits. They trace you based your on your debit card and your. Uh, they, they just know, oh, they were there today. They, they, they were there today. They, they, they. That don't mean you have to put your business everywhere, but I'm tell, telling you, you. And I are acquainted with all my ways. For, going back to the scripture, for there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. What? Every word on my tongue, you know. Where's the soul? You have hedged me behind. But behold, Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before. And laid your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful me, for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Say, say, just the thought that you know that much blows my mind. And the, and the beauty is, is that in the middle of that scripture is a word of protection. You are hedged behind me. And before me, you cover me with a protective coverage before me and behind me. Anywhere I go, you the hedge. You the hedge. You the hedge. And you protect me. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And the hedge don't only protect you from stuff coming from the outside. It protects what's on the inside, too. He helps keep you. Hold me together. Hold me. Because I can't hold myself. 
I'm out of control, but hedge me. Come on. I dare you to ask you, hedge me in, God, and hold me. So I'll be in control. Because if you don't, if I don't rely on your strength and your power, I'll be out of control. God is engaged with me all the time. A hundred percent of the time he's engaged. And if we get out of the hedge, it's because we choose to, but it's not because he didn't put it there. So hedge me. Cover me. Woo! Somebody ought to just shout, thank you, Jesus, for that. Because you're here today. I'm looking at you because there's been protection around you. Somewhere. It couldn't happen to you on the expressway. That accident couldn't take you out. That whatever it was that was wrong that you got from the drugs couldn't kill you. What, what, you know, you ate something and it made you sick, but it didn't take you out because he was a hedge. You, you did get sick, but you didn't die because there was a hedge. Oh, God. You didn't lose your mind from the inside out because there was a Come on, somebody. <laughs> when you felt like giving up, he held you in because he just, yeah. at that time, he wasn't only a hedge, he became a girdle, and he, he tied you up and said, hang on just a little while longer. If, 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 if you can hold on to me, I'll hold on to you better. Come on, somebody. If you can hold on to me, I will hold on to you. And, 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 and my grip is better. So today I'm in his grip. Come on, come on. Come on. Tell somebody I'm in his grip today. Hey, God, God. I'm in his grip today. Somebody I'll give God a praise for that. I, I, I'm in his grip today. And then the end of that Psalm, 139, 23, and 24 says this. Pastor's rushing on. Oh, boy. This is good to me. I don't know whether it is or it's good to me. It, 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 David ends it by saying, search me, O God, and know my heart. That means even though you know God is searching you, you, you don't close the door to, and you say, God, even look at me closer. And know my heart. Try me. And know my anxieties. Come on God. Come closer. And know me. Not as if he don't. But you're giving yourself. You're giving him license. Come on in. Check me out. Work on me. Work on all those ways you know about. Oh you, you, oh, you bad when you ask God to come in there and work on that stuff that you'd rather push back and not give to him. And you just open yourself up and say, try me and know me. Oh, man, oh, man. On the website, gallopfaith.com is a survey with the following results. It is entitled, The Ten Faith Pillars of, the, of a Fully Engaged Walk with God. That's what the handout was. And I, I brought that in case I didn't have uh, somebody to put it up on the screen. So they're there for you so you don't have to write them out. Say amen. Bless you, Pastor. Amen. Bless you, Pastor. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Number one, my fiat. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Thank you for the check. Josh just stood all the way up, Pastor Lee. <laughs> my faith is involved in every aspect of my life. So we walk by faith, not by sight. Number two, because of my faith, I have meaning and purpose in my life. Come on. Is that good to anybody? Yes. Number three, my faith gives me an inner peace. And knowing it is in the personal pronoun, I and me. Yes. 
It's personal to you. Mine. Whoa. I. Number four. I am a person who is spiritually committed. If not, put a question mark there. And after the question mark, say, work on it. Yeah, work on it. That's why we're here to work on it. Not to work it out, but to work on it. <laughs> we didn't work it out too long. Shout it out, run it out, sing it out. Now it's time to work on something for real. Number five, I spend time in worship every day. Question mark, work on it. <laughs> if you don't spend some part of your day singing to yourself in worship. Worship. Six, because of my faith, I have forgiven people who have hurt me deeply. Amen. Question mark, work on it. Amen. Seven, my faith has called me to develop my giving gifts and talents. <laughs> work on it. <laughs> Ooh. Eight, I will take unpopular stands in, in, to defend my faith. You cannot live in this day and not be unpopular when you show up with your God. You can't go along to get along because you're going to hate one and love the other. And if you're going to be for God, somebody going to hate you. For defending your faith. How many of you had to defend your faith this week? In, this, in some way or another you had to defend. If you haven't, have you talked to anybody this week? <laughs> you know what to write behind that one. Ooh. Number nine, I speak words of kindness to those in need of encouragement. All of y'all need to do that because y'all don't say nothing good to me. Y'all need to just... Now, that's not the truth. <laughs> Y'all speak nice to me. <laughs> Number 10. I talk about my faith with those who are not yet Christians. Ooh, not yet Christians. Everybody you should you talk to shouldn't be sweetly saved already. Amen. You keep singing to the choir. That's why I just wonder about the churches. They they overflowing with people, but they all transplants from somewhere else. Where you come? I used to be at. Why are you here? Oh, the entertainment is good. They gonna have this person this Sunday. Oh, I like it. You know. They only in church 20 minutes. Five minute praise and worship. <laughs> Five minutes. Uh, the message is only three and a half minutes. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better. I'm gonna be, <laughs> I promise. I'm. <laughs> so if we bring this one on round the bend, what is God nudging you to do right now? It may be one action step that you can take in the coming week to be more engaged with God. Here's a short list. Maybe it's to forgive someone. Maybe it's to get back on track with your daily quiet time. Bible, prayer, off the phone, off the internet. Maybe it's to start giving like God has asked you to give. Generously. Generously. And without constraint. I heard somebody 
say that one time they, they opened up for offering. It might have been a dream. And they kept coming and they said, it's time to come and give. And they kept coming and giving until the preacher said, stop. Yeah, that was a dream. <laughs> That's what without constraint means. Let's keep coming. Ooh. Maybe it's sharing your faith with someone who you know needs to hear about God. But you've been afraid to approach the subject with them. When the fear shows up, you should know that that's the enemy. Get strategic. If you can't say it at work, say, you know what? Come on, let's, let's go out to lunch again. Let's go off grounds. Him or men. You pay for it. You want them into the kingdom, they worth the cost of lunch. Amen. You pay for it. Come on, go to lunch with me. We're going Dutch. You done lost them. They won't hear nothing you said. You pay for it. And say, you know what? I detected there was something. God will provide an open door. When you see that that door is open, that's your chance to jump through. Don't say, don't pass him one of my cards and say, come to church Sunday. Here, huh, this is my pastor. He'll tell you what to do. Hmm? She said, I'll take that too. I will, but, but who has the first opportunity? You the first touch. Then you can say, come on, come on, let, let, you know what? We're going to get some more. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what some good bread is. Amen. Like, the, like, that, like that roll I just gave you. Or that piece of cornbread y'all love. I get it. Here's another piece. It, it, it's going to happen again. But a lot of times it happens out there where you are at. How many of you know it's on your job? You, how many of you can say there was an open opportunity? How many of you know can attest to the fact that fear will show up? They're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to not, they're, they're going to not like me. The Bible says, remember they hated me first. John 4 and 8. John 4 and 8. Y'all thought I was done. You had closed your little books up and everything. John 4 and 8. Almost. James, I'm sorry. If I glance down too fast, it'll look like a John. James 4 and 8. Thank you. And it's the first part of that phrase. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And he will draw near. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Who has the responsibility? Because it said draw near to God. That's you. God's closest is not up for debate. God's engagement in your life is not up for debate. God's fully engaged with you. And in pulling God toward you, instead of pushing God away, you'll experience his closeness. You can only experience his closeness by pulling him close. You do it. You do it. Then James 4 and 8, the rest of it says... Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Well, those are things that's in the way of you drawing God closer. Amen. Get rid of some stuff. Say, uh, you, you, pull them closer so you got to move stuff out. Come, come close, come close. 
Because people that generally don't want things to come close and don't want to be examined is because I don't want you to see something that you shouldn't see. So he said, cleanse yourself, get rid of stuff, move some furniture out, draw them close. But I read it at the top of the hour, his eyes are in the earth. He already sees it. So he's watching you move furniture. We keep hiding from somebody we can't hide from. Wow. Focus. Final statement. The focus in our life should finally be on Jesus. As you are engaged by God. God's focus is what your focus will become ultimately. And that's Jesus. Focus. Focus becoming more and more like him. Focus on the fact that God has some skin in the game. Focus that God already knows who you are. He knows your shortcoming. You keep trying to offer stuff to him. He said, I already know all I want is you. Blessings to you today. How many are in his grip today? Yeah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. I'm in your grip. Thank you, Father. Father, in Jesus' name. Let's pray, everybody. Take somebody by the hand that's near you. <clears throat> Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you for the word engaged today. We thank you, God, that through our lesson today, we know that you are engaged in our lives, a hundred percent. So God, with that, with that understanding and with that knowledge, we concur with David, search me and try me and know my heart. Know my anxieties, my places of anxiousness. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, Pull it out. We surrender it to you. In the powerful name of Jesus. Thank you that you're an up, you're up close God. You in us and through us. You walk with us and you talk with us. We are never alone. Thank you God that today we know we are never without power. You are it. You sent the Holy Spirit to fill us. You made us Jesus' body in the earth. And you gave us the use of your son's name, Jesus. So with those things, we do conquer and overcome. So in the name of Jesus, searches and tries and know our hearts. Know us. And yes, God, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory. <laughs> it's dying today. So Jesus, before we, we, God, before we stop talking to you, we just want to tell you one more word. That, thank you. <laughs> thank you for knowing us. But you're still willing to be close to us in spite of what you know about us. Thank you. All the room, tell them thank you. Amen. Tell God thank you because you know me. You know my ways. 
You know all my idiosyncrasies. You know them. Thank you. Now put those hands together. Give them a good praise in this house. Thank you. Thank you, God. <laughs> Bless God. Anybody got blessed today? Was that good for you?